Okay, so I'm gonna kick it off. Thank you very much. Um, and thank you, Finance It, for inviting me. This is uh, probably the second time today that I'm in front of about 100 audience. Uh, in the morning, I was uh, giving a workshop for a large uh, financial institutions. So my name is Iftikhar. I'm a senior manager at uh, IBM. It's a small company called IBM. I don't know if you know that. Um, I, I work in the uh, engineering department. It's called client engineering. What we do is uh, quick proof of concepts. So two to three weeks, uh, we take the um, client problem, whatever they're trying to solve, and then we try to bring IBM technology and services to solve it in a quick uh, two to four weeks. I cover uh, banking, financial, insurance sector primarily. So uh, Toronto is one of the markets, but also in the US, some of the clients are working here. So what I was thinking today, and people who are more advanced can use the, uh, barcode to reach out to me um, and uh, we'll connect also later after this if you have any questions. So what I was thinking is uh, the agenda and uh, then I realized that the first project that I was about to talk is about two years ago that I did for IBM and I forgot most of it. So what I was thinking is that I'm going to also talk about SRE monitoring, which is an IBM product called Instana. So, you know, DevOps and monitoring goes hand in hand. Those people who have, um, you know, deployed anything in production knows that that how, you know, important it is to have your environments up and running, and have your SLA and SLO uh, achieve all the time. So I'm going to talk about that, and we'll see if we have time, and if you like it, I'll I'll maybe to go to a demo. I'm just preparing an environment for another presentation, so uh, we'll see if we can get there. Okay, so I guess. Everyone knows uh, software development and maybe before the, the new technologies of cloud and DevOps, we used to do it the good old times, right? Uh, you, you start with a VM, you, you, know, you have your code ready, you find out how you wanna compile it, build it and deploy it. And then maybe in this time you have you know, sleepless nights, you wake up and then your still build is not working. Uh, maybe some problems in, in, in your code or maybe uh, the, the compiler that you're using, maybe just the VMs issues. And then those are the good old days, right? So this example that I'm giving is, uh, is fairly common, right? And what DevOps and you know, DevSecOps is able to do is that you can streamline that process from development, build, testing, deployment. And this is one of the large scale project that uh, my team did. So uh, the application was on WebSphere. Those of you who know, it's an IBM middleware. And uh, the code was, I mean, legacy code, right? So 25 year old framework. And, and we were struggling with finding out ways to really do this deployment in a more efficient way because we were selling it to the clients and the clients were expecting to develop something new on it or maybe you know, uh, do a new release. And, and what, what we were thinking is that, can we like do it a little bit more modernized? So what are the first thing you think about when you do modernization or app modernization? Um, we thought about uh, DevOps, cloud, IBM has its own cloud platform. So obviously that was the preferred way. And we also talk about uh, containerization. So uh, if you know about Red Hat, which has been bought by IBM. So OpenShift is the IBM's platform um, for, uh, for container orchestration. And uh, I think I can safely say that it's the best platform um, if you want to see in production and, and how you can deploy applications and then scale it. So what uh, my team did is we first of all look at, you know, what can we do to really bring this, the development phase at least. So looking at the, looking at the build process, just the build process, like how can we, and I don't know if I'm going too detail or is that okay? Good. Please let me know that, you know, no, just go into the next one. So what we did was that, first of all, we, we have to really look into what can we do in, in order to bring the build time more streamline it. So instead of doing you know, the, the regular build process, we, we looked at it 
and then we see if we can use a tools which I'm going to go into detail, um, Argo CD and and Tecton pipeline. So what what they do is you can you can you can divide your build and 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 uh, and deployment processes into smaller chunks, and then you can not only put them on an OpenShift cluster, but you can also monitor the state of the cluster that is in. So if there is a drift happens, right, it would correct itself. So just to give you an example, let's say you, you have this whole thing automated, and I'm going to go into the next slide, which will show you exactly what I mean by that, is that when you have, let's say, the whole thing automated, and, and the developers come up with a new build for that container, and you push that build through the process, the system would detect that new build and would see that there's a drift. So the older one, let's say, is 4.5, and now you have 4.7 or 8 available. So it would go and, and see what is in the production. And obviously, it would go from dev, test, prod, and automatically start doing the deployment. So this is what we call GitOps, right? So if those of you, I think, who have done this have seen it in, in the uh, and the advantages that you get. So you don't only keep your development code in, in a Git-based repository, but you also keep your state of the containers. So you know what uh, Docker container you're running on, what's the version, if your pods are healthy or not. Those are kind of things that you can also detect and course correct uh, through this process. So that was, again, you see the symbol, it's IBM Cloud. Those of you who do not know, maybe, I don't know if uh, anyone use IBM Cloud, by the way? Don't be, yeah, good. I always get this, like people are not trying to uh, admit it or maybe. Um, so amazing. So th this, these are the, uh, you know, the steps that we took, but just to let you know that the process that we took um, did involve looking at what is available in the market and what is available at the IBM. So we were, we were happy enough to like find most of the components are coming out of the IBM labs and we were able to use it. And then obviously, you know, connect uh, the pipeline statuses with Slack. You can always, you know, connect with your build manager or QA to approve that through the process. So you'll see the whole uh, supply chain uh, automated. Any questions here? I'm going to go to the next one. OK. So now once we have this thing done, then what we realize is if, if this is going to be in production, then we need at least four nines right, to be up and running. So what is the tool that we're going to use? I don't know if you know Dynatrace. There's a bunch of tools out there. But IBM has its tool called Instana. And Instana, what it does is that it gives you observability on the whole layer. And I'll show you, I have the whole demo prep as well, but it will show you the microservice-based application breakdown, and it will give you that sort of peace of mind that your application is up and running. You don't have a lot of error codes coming out, you know, and, and something is watching your application and, and your production uh, environments 24-7. So, the, t the problem that IBM is trying to solve in Instana is that increased deployment frequency. So, you know, we had the time when I started this thing, there used to be maybe one or two deployments a month. Now we have hundreds of deployments in a company like Google or IBM each day for some of the applications. So how do you keep track of that? And how do you make sure that the end user experience is, is uh, optimum, right? And avoid costly downtime, right? So nobody wants uh, your Gmail to go down or Facebook, for example, God forbid if that happens. So the answer is that you have real-time monitoring. So what Instana provides, and again, I'm going with this because I want to connect the dots of this first application that we did, and then we connected with the observability. So it will all come together, don't worry. So Instana provides uh, real-time monitoring per second based sampling and would give you the real uh, 
you know, troubleshooting like where is the bottleneck, it will give you that. You can also connect it with any incident um, tracking systems. So it will open the bu uh, like bug or defect for you so the developers can wanna work on it. And it would also provide the teams who are doing investigation or uh, performance, uh, let's say, uh, root cause analysis. So this is one of the most powerful thing that uh, you would get it. And it is supported on distributed as well as mainframes because um, obviously, you know, a lot of organizations are using mainframes as one of their um, technology stack. So I don't have a place to stand properly, so I don't want to maybe come here. But I do want it to show the audience just the uh, one part of it, and then maybe we can take questions. Maybe I lost my share screen. Okay. Uh, here. Okay. You see my screen? It's coming up. Screen share. I'm sharing my screen. I'm going to try again. It always works the second time. There we go. No? Stop sharing. Just the entire screen, right? Is there a specific one that you want? Yeah, the, uh, I have the here. That one? One? Yeah. Okay. Sorry, I didn't use uh, Zoom for a while. We have WebEx, right? So we use that. It's much better. But you have to pay for it. Thank you. How are we doing with time? It's good. Okay. I'm going to take five minutes and this is, uh, thank you. <clears throat> Perfect. Okay. So now let's say you have deployed the application and it's somewhere in the VM or in container in the cloud. How can you trace where is the problem happening? And that's what I'm going to show you. So let's take an example of an application. It's a robot shop. So this application, we can check the dependencies of this. Where is the front end and it's using an Nginx, right? What are the microservices running on the back end? This is obviously, you know, on Node.js, some part of it, some part of it's PHP. So I'm just going to hover over it, and then it's going to show you each microservice and where is it located, what's happening in there. All the telemetries are getting extracted. And it will also show you some of the problem areas. You see this one? Our JDBC database has a problem. And we'll show you how we can see the, the problem and how we can try to resolve it. Just to give you an example, like here, so. You can even go to the packet levels, how many packets calls are getting traced, and, and um, if there is you know, a bottleneck that you find out. But let me go through the issue. For example, we have an issue here detected. And by the way, all of this is happening with just one agent on the VM, or if it's, uh, if it's a cluster, then you have to install the, the VM, uh, the, uh, the cluster agent on uh, OpenShift or Kubernetes or whatever you have you. So here you can see that the system is telling us that the erroneous call rate is too high. So I'm just going to click on it and see what is happening. Okay. Maybe I'm not 
getting all the things here. Just let me go back. Hmm. Okay. So I'm going to pick another incident where there seems to be a problem. And now it looks like everything is good. So you're not going to see any problem. Okay. But you, you get the picture, right? So what's happening is um, you, you can set up alerts on individual application level. You can set up alerts on, on your on your infrastructure level. So if it's on VM, if it's on a, a cluster, if it's on a um, cloud, and you can also see the breakdown of the application. So what services running on, where are these services located, and it supports almost everything. So just in ending, I'm going to show you a couple of things here, and then you can uh, have any questions you can ask. So you can also see the upstream, downstream applications, where it is it calling. So let's say if this application is connected to a payment system, I guess you guys uh, work in that, right? So you will see um, what you know payment systems are getting through, when is it getting used most, you will see the utilization and everything. And it goes really in detail of uh, one second granularity, like you can get uh, information on a, on a second level. And then it will give you, like I mentioned, so any error messages on application level, what infrastructure looks like for this whole application. So I can see, you know, the payment uh, part of the application is written on PHP. You can drill down and you can see what stack is connected and uh, and yeah. So, so there's we we need we can first of all get the whole infrastructure monitored this way, and then we can build what we call alerts and matrix to find out if your application is working fine. And that's how you make sure that the application has X amount of nines, right? Uh, working for it. Yeah, that's it. So questions? I'm gonna stop sharing. If I don't get any question, that means you hated the whole presentation. I hope. Get some questions. Yes. Hi. Uh, what is the difference this platform between the new Relic or now? Yes. New Relic is also doing almost the same thing. I think the only thing is that the supported platform it has it's a little bit lower than Instana because Instana has Z mainframe, right? So the mainframes is an IBM product, obviously, and uh, a lot of the customers who are buying this they're buying because of the the, the supported uh, platform. So you have MQ mainframe, you have JVM support, um, and it, it, New Relic is doing the same thing. It's also a very good tool. Yeah. The only thing is the how many the technology stack it supports. Perfect. Thank answer you. Answer your question. First question. Second one. Nice to meet you. Um, Thank you. Thank you. My name is David, I'm a TPM in cybersecurity, so I know it's not a security meetup, but still in, in terms of DevSecOps. So my current client, for example, here's the use case. They have a lot of environments, call it okay. technical debt, call it environments pro, uh, whatever it is. And um, once we start discovering those environments, we find a lot of vulnerabilities, mm -hmm. right? Um, so I guess the question is, how would that solution instead of how is it integrated with CrowdStrike, Qualys, Exabeam, Splunk? Mm -hmm. What are the pipelines there? Um, and so from the standpoint of um, cross-product integration, mm -hmm. that's the first question. Mm -hmm. Second question is how would you manage that situation where third-party environments constantly have some junk in there? Yes. Sorry to say that. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. So what I've seen in, um, in, in my interaction with solutioning with large clients is uh, people are using these tools for different reasons. So some are using for end-to-end -end tracing because they do want to see um, where the problem is and root cause analysis. Like I said, if your payment system goes down, you're not sleeping on Saturday, right? Um, the, 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 then there are people who are just using it for monitoring. And then there are people who are using it for security. So I did not show you the part where it can show some bad actors 
into the system and it can detect some anomalies, right? So if someone is trying to attack your HTTP with some you know, barrage of, uh, of a bad application, but to come into your answer uh, to question, um, you can connect pretty much with everything, but let's say if you're using Splunk, Splunk is more log aggregator, right? Um, and it's used more for root cause analysis, I think, but it does not give you this much of like in detail steps and, and the kind of the kind of user friendliness it has, right? And plus, don't forget, whenever we do the, the deployment and testing, the, the thing that comes up the most, or which basically is the deciding factor of winning or losing, is your performance. How much CPU utilization this tool would get on top of your applications, because obviously that is cost, right? And we're talking about now cloud uh, uh, applications that are completely cloud-based, and you have to pay them on a monthly basis. So, um, so it does connect, but you have to see why do you want to use that, what you're using it for, um, and then then you can definitely do that. So it supports almost everything. Like I said, right? I can give you the the link. You can go in, three thousand application stacks, everything. It, it it supports. It has something called the auto discovery, which you install on the VM level or in a pod level or anywhere, and it detects all the services, all the components, and start mapping them out what I just showed you, right? So, yeah. Any other question? So far two, it's good. Please. Hi. And people on the web, you can also ask questions, right? They can ask questions? Oh, okay, sure, please go ahead. Uh, so I have a question regarding about Argo CD uh, yeah. deployments. Uh, so what is the best practice to promote the releases between the various environments in Argo CD? Mm -hmm. yeah. So use it. Yeah. Are you using it, Argo CD, right now? Yeah. Okay. So what we've done is we use the cluster deployment for Argo CD. So we found out that this is the best way you can deploy this application on this cluster. You need three pods for this, this one, this one. And you know, the scalability options are these. So Argo CD is amazing. So it, it, it has something called Helm charts that you've seen where you can pretty much like Docker compose, but better. And, and then you can have a full image of your deployment. So what I did and the team, by the way, <laughs> none of this is done by me, the whole thing, right? So I have a great team. Does. So what we did was um, we, we come up with something called dev, like in dev environment, this would look like this. Then for um, you know pre-prod and prod environment looks like this. So the best practices I would say is look into your um, environment's requirement, right? So what is your dev environment requirement? Is that going to be changing a lot? Is that you're just testing out a new application so it's not gonna be testing, like changing a lot? And based on that, then you can start uh, using Argo CD. Right? Okay. Thank you. Yes, thank you.